Question, guys. What do you do when this happens? Man, I'm going to knock that job out in 15 minutes. Let me slap this battery in this cordless nailer. No, you didn't die on me. Come on. You didn't just die on me, did you? No, no. Tell me it ain't so. The battery just died. I know I charged it. I could have sworn I plugged it in. Oh, B, the plug came out. <sighs> yeah, it happens to all of us at some point, but fortunately, there's another option. Well, it's time to break out <sighs> the good old compressor. Hey everybody, welcome back to Calibrate Tools. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can learn how to use a compressor to get the job done. Now, compressors are used in many industries that require compressed air to operate the machinery or tools. Mechanics use them when they're taking the lug nuts off of your tires with the uh, ratchet guns. Painters use them with certain spray guns. And you definitely see them in the construction industry with nailers and nail guns as well. And they're also used in and with many other tools. And every time you stop to put air in your tire and you press that button on that machine, you're operating a compressor. So compressors are everywhere. Hidden most of the time, sometimes in plain view but they're definitely an essential part of the tool arsenal. Okay guys, I'm gonna get a little technical here when it comes to certain terms that I want you to get familiar with when talking about compressors, because the compressors are not universal. They range from two gallons, which is a tank size, to 80 gallons. So that's a wide range of difference, and it depends on the application that you're gonna use it for. You want a smaller tank for smaller jobs, and you want a bigger tank for bigger jobs because the pressure that's being pushed by the compressor depends on the tank size, okay? And that's very important to know. So I don't want you guys going out there saying, hey, he told me to get this compressor or he recommended this compressor and uh, it didn't work for the job. So you gotta get familiar with these terms so you make some informed decisions when you get your compressor. Now, this is a DeWalt six gallon air compressor and it maxes out at 165 PSI, that's pounds per square inch. But we'll get into that later and what that stands for. But this size compressor is on the lower end and uh, they usually don't require oil. But it's always good to check your owner's manual to make sure that your compressor does not require oil. Because if it did, you would find the dipstick on the lower portion of the compressor and uh, you would just take it out like you would a car engine dipstick and check the oil like that. Now, larger compressors approaching the 80-gallon uh, tank size range usually require oil. And uh, many times you find a window on the side of those compressors showing the actual oil levels. Now, many compressors require what's called a break-in period. And all that is is you want to break in your compressor or brand new compressor before you actually use it in an application. So you would let it run for about 30 minutes uh, with all the drains open. Uh, before you use it. Once again, it's a good rule of thumb to check your owner's manual to see what is the required break-in period for your compressor. Okay, we see that this particular air compressor maxes out at 165 PSI, which stands for pounds per square inch. Or to be more technical, it stands for pound force per square inch. So PSI simply measures how many pounds of pressure or force is being applied to a particular area, in this case, uh, square inch. Now, most pneumatic 
tools or air tools, which is the same thing, require about 90 PSI to operate. And uh, most light duty compressors, you know, they clock in at 90 PSI. So we see that this one at 165 PSI is more than enough to handle most uh, air tools out there. Now, sound or noise are measured in units called decibels. And that's what DBA stands for. And it pretty much tells you how loud something is. So this one comes in at 75.5. And based on uh, a lot of reviews on this particular compressor, that's pretty quiet compared to others. So you can do your research. Um, and it's also good to know this because depending on where you're gonna use the compressor, you know, you may wanna consider the sound levels. Now over here, we have another rating, uh, which is 2.6 SCFM. Now SCFM stands for standard cubic feet per minute. Simply put, SCFM is a measurement of airflow. Now, this is another very important acronym that you should be familiar with when you are shopping for your compressor because it could determine whether you get the right one or the wrong one. Now, to be totally honest, this measurement, standard cubic feet per minute, or SCFM, can be uh, hard to pin down, even in the world of compressors or those enthusiasts into uh, airflow and pressure flow and all of that. But the experts have agreed on certain parameters. So when measuring SCFM, number one, the air temperature must be uh, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The relative humidity of the air must be 36% and the air itself must be measured at sea level. So take what you want with that information and uh, do your own research about SCFM to determine what size compressor is best for you. Okay. Let me confuse you a little more and get into why they got two gauges on the air compressor. Nah, no, just kidding, but let's get into it though. Okay, here are the two gauges that most air compressors have. The one on the left is called the tank pressure and the one on the right is called the reg pressure. Reg stands for regulated pressure. Now the tank pressure shows the actual pressure inside the tank when the air is flowing into the tank. So as air flows into the tank, it's exerting pressure onto the tank gauge uh, all the time. And that simply displays that in this gauge. Now the reg pressure or the regulated pressure simply regulates the tank pressure over here. And it simply uh, reduces the available tank pressure to the best operating pressure for the air tool or equipment that you're gonna use. Now this knob adjusts the amount of regulated pressure you want applied to your tool. And uh, that'll be reflected on the gauge here. Okay, so last but not least, let's talk about the other parts of the compressor. We have the uh, hose nozzle connections right here. If you wanna hook up two, Two hoses you got two nozzles here's the power button on and off switch right there and uh, here's the uh, the bleed valve to drain you know excess water so as you can see right here, as you can see some dirty water came spouting out of there Always good to drain your tanks. Okay, it's now time to put this air compressor to the test. Okay, when we turn the compressor on by flipping this switch right here, we know that the compressor maxes out at 165 PSI. And that should be reflected on this gauge right here, the tank pressure gauge. So when the needle reaches 165 or whereabouts, the compressor should shut off. Now, some compressors have cut-in settings, meaning that it'll cut back on once it reaches a certain PSI. For instance, if it reaches 80 PSI, it'll cut back on. So let's take it for a spin. Here we go.
Okay, we see that the gauge cut off at around 165 PSI as stated on the specs here. So we know that's working well. Now, if we connect a hose to one of the nozzles, the pressure's gonna drop and we should see that needle drop as well. So here we go. Got the other end of the hose hooked up to the nail gun here, the good old finishing nailer. So let's see what happens. So we see that the pressure dropped uh, almost down to 150 PSI. So every time you use the compressed air, the pressure will drop. And remember, this also has to be regulated as well, because if this is at zero, you're gonna get nothing out of your tool. Okay. Now that you've seen the compressor in action, one important thing to remember, that these two gauges right here do not control when the compressor turns on and off, okay? That's very important to remember. These gauges simply display the readings of the pressure that's going on inside the tank and the airflow. The compressor pressure switch turns the compressor on and off, depending on what setting you have it on. Okay, guys, remember, when you're operating machines like this or any other power tool or anything that uses electricity or compressed air, you wanna be as safe as possible. You wanna make sure that your hoses are in good shape and all your valves are good. And you wanna make sure you drain your compressor of any water and any air that's left in it. Also, you might wanna check the expiration date on the tank so it won't explode on you. That won't be pretty. Also, you don't wanna use extension cords with the compressor it's better to extend the hoses with connectors than to use an extension cord. Okay, so if you learned something about compressors today, hit that thumbs up button, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh yeah, and if you got anything to add, some more tips, go ahead and leave it in the comments. We really appreciate that.